Big beat on both the top and bottom lines, up about 1% or more after hours. Whirlpool CEO Mark Bitzer joins us now for an exclusive interview. 24% sales growth, Mark, and, and a raise on guidance to 13% growth versus 6 Talk about what you're seeing from the consumer right now that's making you feel so optimistic. So, Sarah, first of all, thanks for having me back on the show. Obviously, we knew that the expectations coming to earnings season were high, and we're really pleased to see that we even beat the most optimistic forecast. Um, and the 24% revenue growth, more than doubling operating profits, um, is, I think, by any definition, impressive. We do see strong consumer demand. Um, we actually see it sustained. Um, we see a multi-year upcycle in consumer demand and appliances. Um, and that's what we're kind of leveraging. That's what we see now, not just for the, this current quarter, but for the mid um, and probably long-term future. But you're also talking about higher prices. A lot, a lot of companies, a lot of industries are dealing with higher input costs on commodities and other kind of raw materials. Talk us through what you're doing on prices and what you have planned. Yeah, obviously we're facing an environment where we just see cost inflation. Um, I don't think that cost inflation will go away overnight. Um, we see it on multiple fronts, be it on raw material, be it on logistic costs. Um, and we decided early on when we saw that wave is kind of not stoppable anymore, um, we saw the need to come up with price increases. And we, throughout the world, we either communicated or have already implemented price increases in the range of 5 to 12%. And frankly, even in Q1, we already see some traction of these price increases. So it's just the way how we have to deal with the significant raw material inflation. And we've done similar so successfully in 2018 and 2012. It's interesting to hear you say that you see this demand as sustained with price increases and, and with some concerns that this is as good as it gets for a housing market, for the manufacturing sector, because all the stimulus is flowing now in, in this quarter, in the next few quarters. So, so what do you see down the road that is making you feel optimistic for a longer period? Yeah, I think ultimately we need to start with a consumer. You know, we all hope that COVID at one point is behind us, but I don't think the consumer behavior will come back to pre-COVID. Um, and what I mean with that, the consumer has been, many consumers have been at home for a year. Um, you don't change consumer behavior like a, a flash memory where you just erase. That behavior will stay. People have a stronger orientation to the house and the home. Um, if you listen to all the companies announcing their work policies, I would say many consumers will stay on average one or two days more at home. And that just drives appliance consumption, um, literally appliance consumption. Um, and that will not go away in any time soon. Coupled with that is, I think, in particular North America, where we just see a multi-year upcycle on the housing market, new construction, um, which obviously also plays to our strengths. So you put that together, consumer behavior of staying at home, nesting, um, coupled with a housing market, I think that gives us the confidence that this is not just a one-time blip based on stimulus money. This is a multi-year cycle. You think it's a multi-year cycle from housing, even from here, with concerns about the tightness in the market, the fact that affordability is getting tougher as, as prices rise? You think it, it still has legs? Yeah, I mean, we have argued for many years, we do believe in the U.S. for a steady state housing supply. The U.S., given the demographic trends, needs about 1.7 to 1.8 million house, new housing. Um, now, you know, for decades, it's been below 1.3 um, or below 1.4. So given the demographic trends, given the age of a housing stock, both a residential and, and rental, um, you probably need a couple of years with 2 million plus of housing starts just to get to steady state. I'm not talking overheating, steady state. Um, so that is versus current trends. That's a 40, 50 percent increase. Um, and it's just to restabilize the market. Yes, um, House price increases may temporarily damp the demand a little bit, um, but frankly, the fundamental need for housing and household formation trends, that will not change. Mm. What about globally, Mark? You're, you're a big exporter and you've got a pretty good, good global footprint. It looks like you saw growth around the world, despite the fact that we're recovering at such uneven rates from COVID, the disease and the economy. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're very pleased, as you, as you noted, in the first quarter, we saw growth growth everywhere um, throughout the entire world. I would say in the midterm, we're probably most confident about North America, South America, um, Asia and India deals right now still with a COVID wave. Um, Europe economic recovery may be a little bit slower than the North America, 
But also here, the fundamental consumer behavior trends towards a reorientation towards the home will not fundamentally change. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.